Uh, and there's something I think that's kind of nice about having the exact same song. I don't know what it is. That's like, there's something to be said. It's like, it's almost like, you know what you, you know what it is when you hear it. And there's something about that. You know, when someone kind of changes their song up all the time, it almost like might kind of throw you up. Like you, like you might not even think it's the same show anymore or something like that. Well, it's like when you watch like the first couple scenes of Pokemon, and all of a sudden it opens up. So you want to be a master number one? So you want to, what the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, we switched generations, buddy! Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, you... We just came across so and let Biscuit have them! Sure, we're doing the white ball rap shit! Okay. It's popular! I thought you guys were doing the Prince wannabe Michael Jackson shit at first, but alright. Not popular! <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, have to, do you have to shout at me every single time? Yeah, man, it's part of the lyrics! You wanna be a master? Uh, ma master of what? Pokemon! Um... Uh, I, remember, I remember that one as well. It's not we as, tried to get Sub-41 to do it, but uh, they cost too much, so this is what you got. I don't even remember the... Uh, yeah, I remember... The lyrics is like, We all live in a Pokemon world. Pokemon! Uh, there's some shit like that. It didn't have the... You know, because you get people who, like... Talk, I, mean, I, I mean, I talk shit on the show. But, I mean, you get people who, like... Talk about that show now with Vile, but, like, but I still like the original theme song. Still, the original theme song is pretty catchy. I love the original theme. I love the entire like to oh, be still... a master soundtrack. I crank that all the time. Oh, I know, I know. I've seen the playlist. <laughs> like it popped up like I like on my Spotify like your year in review or whatever, and it's just like oh shit, he listened to that album quite a bit still. <laughs> Some well, we, things we, never we, change. <laughs> we talk about it enough. I put it on. We had the the companion pod. We had the com companpanion music playlist for the website i put that on there so a couple songs that on thing's there, like so such like, a massive like list of tunes now because like we keep throwing stuff together on it it's made just to be something you put on random and just let play in the background while you work on something it's like goes like from like beatles to like run dmc to wu-tang to pokemon yeah so <laughs> <laughs> the ninja turtles one's on there too and everything from the video game and then oh deer tech why not yeah yeah just just all kinds of fun stuff there but um Hello, trail welcome. mix of awesome. I was, say, right, go ahead. I was gonna say hello and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Just in case you had no idea what was going on, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we were just jumping back and to a good old movie time. We actually, this is like one of those like weird podcasts that sort of like weaved its way in. Like on Wes's show at Via VHS, we thought we were doing an Inner Dragon one at one point. We're like, yeah, we'll come on and do an Inner Dragon one. And then it turned out it wasn't Inner the Dragon. It was um, what was it um? The Last Dragon, which I actually watched to prepare myself for, and due to complications, kind of make it on that one, but it kind of got me in a big Bruce Lee mood, even though that movie is just kind of like a, a, a Bruce Lee fanboy movie, but I'm still not, not like not starring Bruce Lai, who I know you still pronounce it Bruce Lee, but let's be honest, it's Bruce Lai. <laughs> his, his whole life's a lie, though he actually is still pretty in interesting at the end of the day. But, um, but the other thing about that, the thing about uh, Last Dragon is, you know, it was... Uh, I won't, I won't go into the whole thing here because I'd actually not after sometime after Wes posts the episode to his because I don't want it to I don't want the two episodes to clash together I want to do it some dime down the line but it's just interesting I'll just say this it seems like something that I guess kind of like a Scott Pilgrim esque kind of in the way kind of like want something where it's like oh we're fans of this thing so we want to make a movie that's very self aware about that but it was around in the early '80s or mid '80s so it's like oh wow I'm not, this wasn't not that many of uh, ah, this kind of thing didn't exist so much back then no yeah it's like that's kind of an early day thing to have that kind of idea and that movie sounds pretty darn interesting i wouldn't mind checking it out at some point but um i remember when west was even talking about Enter the dragon he's like well i know it sounds like kind of like a movie on your podcast i'm like well if, if it was a movie on our podcast we would choose like an obscure bruce lee movie like chinese connection and or like which one we're gonna do today way slash return of the dragon depending on where you come from if you come from america it's return of the dragon because the dragon's returning from back in time it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense but enter the dragon sold a lot so we want to make this movie cash in on it after fist of fury the big boss enter the dragon now the ultimate the way of the dragon <laughs> Dragon whips his tail. Starring Bruce Lee conquering evil in Rome and using all his fighting skills in this authentic martial arts adventure. Ah! Close the door. Ah! 
You're crazy. They will kill you. Kill me? Who? The Way of the Dragon with superstar Bruce Lee as Tang Long and co-starring some of the world's greatest fighters. Chuck Norris, seven times world karate champion. Robert Wall, the 1970 number one karate professional. Wong in Sik, Korean master of Hapkido, all in The Way of the Dragon. <laughs> Bruce Lee's greatest achievement as star, director, and scriptwriter, The Way of the Dragon. revived in the Colosseum in a very different way. The way of the dragon. Bruce Lee, the way of the dragon. Essentially, that's the, that was their thought process, because, well, I want to say this first off, because preparing for, um, Watching Last Dragon, like, oh, we gotta watch Enter the Dragon. We're gonna watch Enter the Dragon for Wes's show. And then, you know, still haven't made a chance to meet onto that. But then we're like, you know what, let's let's do Way of the Dragon for our show. So I've just been in this big Bruce Lee mood. I'll say this about um about uh what about Way of the Dragon. Oh no, no, uh, Enter the Dragon. It's one of those things where when I was a little kid, I didn't know much about Bruce Lee. So just going into that movie, or just watching it like on HBO or whatever, I was like, oh, is this the one based on his life? Because I knew Dragon was in the title. That's all I knew. <laughs> There's always a so, dragon. Yeah. That so movie's amazing, I, though. Uh, dragon, the Bruce Lee story. <laughs> and, and that movie came out like a few years previously from when I was watching this. So I just had it on, and I was watching it for the first 15 minutes. Like, whoa. Bruce Lee was a secret agent? And then at some point, was, oh. Because they kept on calling him Mr. Lee for a while. So I'm like, well, it must be Bruce Lee, right? That's got this is the one based on his life. And then like once he once the guy with the scar in his face, like he killed your sister. But, oh, okay, all right, never mind. <laughs> this is a very exciting life story. Shit, now, he got sent I... to an island and had to do this tournament and everything. It was before that happened, but they're talking about all this shit and like this like someone from the CIA wants to talk to you. Like, oh man, now I because I used you saw Bruce Lee in all these posters. Like, who is this guy? I don't know. He's a good kung fu guy, I guess. And then you're watching this thing, like. Oh, shit, I get it. I get it, yeah. This guy's fucking important. <laughs> he was saving the world on an island. They're like, oh, oh, this is not the one based on his life. This is something else. Okay. Yeah. Keep in mind, I was like six or seven or some shit. Well, no, I it, 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 <laughs> that, that's actually a, just a, that could be a normal complication right there. You know what I mean? Especially when you got Dragon the Bruce Lee not too early on. You well, know. plus, well, plus they kept on calling him Mr. Lee. So I'm like, well, his name's be. Bruce Lee, so come on. Yeah. I had to deviate from that. And um, so just moving forward, I was actually gone to Bruce Lee at a young age. and Not young, young age, but I guess kind of like a sophomore year of high school. We had to do a project on someone who changed the world, like a history project on someone who changed the world or changed the course of history in one way or the other. And you had to actually pitch it to the teacher and explain how and why and give up enough reasons. <laughs> that's and really just like, like that, that's got to be a great assignment just for a teacher to watch. Here's a bunch of 12 year olds literally pitch. There's like 30, 12 year olds in the class pitching. Oh, so sophomores, I'm going to say probably more like 14. Oh yeah, you, sophomore. you said sophomore. Never mind, my bad. I was thinking middle school okay. for some reason. Okay, well, whatever. That would be funny though like here's why kid rock is the next generation of the beatles and the teacher's like fuck i gotta hear this yeah continue <laughs> go on <laughs> that's why bomb to the bong the bang the bang diggy 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 flop floopy and flop flop the flippy is the next love you do like yeah 
All right. All right, kid. D. <laughs> Getting deep now. See you in summer school. <laughs> Well, even still, only a couple of years later, you're still getting like that, like that, like like, kind of early teenager like mindset of like, let me tell you what's important, man. I'm gonna tell you what the world's all about and who's awesome, unlike who you think's awesome. Exactly. There's definitely still that going on, but I, was I mean, just... you were probably one of the only people that's like, here's somebody from olden days that I think's awesome. They're like, oh, okay. Ryan's not picking. <laughs> He's not picking. Um. Some boy band icon. <laughs> yeah. Why in sync is so changing the world. Oh fuck, this wasn't this was in nineteen ninety nine. By then what wouldn't have been in sync? It would have no, been No, it would have been like why my chemical romance is gonna be the next hottest thing. Oh, that's when we were pushing against it. They're like, ew, they're emo. We yeah, can't be like, seen can't, We can't be caught dead with this. They'll think we're gay. Exactly. Yeah, two thousand four, <laughs> not far off there. Um no, we, uh, well, my thing is I didn't really know a whole lot about Bruce Lee at the time. Like, all right, someone who's changed the world. And then, you know, I was actually watched Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, finally. I'm like, oh, that was a really interesting movie. I really like it. All right, let me check. Then I went and just, and, like, looked and watched, like, went out of my way, looked for all of his movies, watched them all, which is not easy to do in a small redneck town with no Wi Fi back in 2004. Well, nobody had Wi Fi really at that time period. Not Wi Fi, but no internet. You know what I mean? No, no, yeah. not Wi Fi, but like, no internet really. There wasn't a lot of internet available that that anywhere around there. So, tracking it down and then just you're like, oh, okay, and just kind of learning about him is you know, like in high school. So, yeah, and uh, Way of the Dragon was one of my favorite movies that he made. Well, that was the days when you go to Fye and you'd go to the Kung Fu section that they had there, and it wasn't yeah. that big, but there was still quite a bit in there that you could pull from. That's what, that's when we, whenever we'd go to Modesto, that's what it ultimately became about. It became about going to Modesto, buying comics, buying CDs, and then going to Suncoast, buying westerns, anime, and kung fu movies. <laughs> yeah, because they had a section for all three of those. <laughs> and that was so cool. But, um, well, that's the thing, too, is about these Bruce Lee movies, is, um, yeah, it's like, I mean, nowadays, I, say, I feel like you could probably run across them a little bit more easier, but they're still even... Like, there was this set I remember I saw, like, a couple of years ago that I really want to get. It might have been even more than that. But, like, it was the Bruce Lee box set. And it was, like, super special edition. It had all the Chinese cuts in them and everything like that. Like, fully restored and so on. Is the blue one? Like, the blue shiny Yeah, it's one? kind of like a blue shiny case. And it was, like, 35 bucks. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this at some point. I'm going to get this at some point. And then I just kind of put it off. Now that thing's, like, $75 used. <laughs> Because the worst yeah. part, too, is, like, My Return of the Dragon is one of those ones where it's, like, it ain't no, there's no thrills or anything on it. It's, like, you want language selection? No, you don't get that. You get fucking American dub, Bruce Lee. There's something about those, because you would always get, because, you know, whenever you would get, like, these kung fu movies, it was all, like, I'll say this, like, uh, Suncoast would always rape you up the ass with their pricing, but when it came to a lot of kung fu movies, it was like, oh, um, eight bucks for like 12 movies that they all probably just paid a dollar for each for the rights. Yeah, if that like, even. Yeah, because they'd always have something like, okay, this has two Sonny Chiba movies. He's always pretty good. This has two or three Bruce Lee movies. Maybe a Chinese Connection knockoff starring Bruce Lai. Yeah, Chinese Connection a, Part 3. Or yeah, or maybe like a random like samurai or random ninja movie. They just throw this shit together, and out of that, um, there was you would find some good gems. There was a lot of dog shit you'd come across, but there were some really good gems of movies that like I don't even I couldn't tell you who made them or who directed them. But there's like one you know when uh, there's one called it was called the it was marketed as the Blind Fist of Bruce Lee. <laughs> But I think it was just maybe the actor, Bruce Lai, maybe. But like, it was just about a guy who ran a bank. And some guys, I guess is how it worked in China. You just walk in like, guess what? We're running this bank now. All right, we'll settle this through Kung Fu. And then from there, <laughs> from there, the dude ends up like, you know, losing his bank because he lost in a Kung Fu match. And then a blind dude teaches him how to fight. And he has to fight it back. And things just get more intense. Like, well, I'm going after his woman now. And it just, it, it gets one of those very dark, bleak movies. But it was actually... A really good kung fu movie and out of that um 
I don't know why it's called the Blind Fist of Bruce Lee because Bruce Lee wasn't even fucking in it. But <laughs> yeah, no, no, it that was just it. like that Chinese sell tactic. Be like, well, it's gonna sell better if it just says it's Bruce about Bruce Lee. <laughs> Is it about well, Bruce Lee? A... No, actually, it wasn't even made like that. Well, they had a series of sequels, of unofficial sequels, that came out, um, came out to his movies. And the thing is, though, because, like, you know, it, it was always like, well, what happens at the end of... All right, because here's the thing. It would always mix up. They actually rotated them, flipped titles around. Here, Chinese Connection... Well, there... All right. <laughs> it's going to get confusing here. <laughs> it's always confusing uh, when it comes to Bruce Lee titles. It, it's like it's like the thing with, like, Vega, Balrog, and M. Bison and Street Fighter. How they just switched <laughs> all their names around. <laughs> yeah, just rotated it like in a triangle. Like, in the... What I never can figure out about that rotation is one of those characters does not need to be rotated whatsoever. Like, okay, what you're doing, you're, you're fixing um, Bison because you didn't want it to, you know, be like Mike Tyson, so you switched that there. But why did you have to switch, like, um, I guess it's Vega. Well, no, well. Vega is Bison. Yeah. Balrog is Vega. And, um. No, Balrog's uh, Bison in Japan. That's why they switched it, because they didn't want Mike Tyson. Balrog is Bison. That's, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. But by, by, oh, Now I'm fucking confused. In Japan, <laughs> Bison. In Japan, Bison is... Uh, Balrog. Balrog. Other way around, actually. And then Balrog is Vega in Japan. Yeah. And, and then Vega is in Bison here. So... Uh, so... Yeah. So confusing. You know. Uh, I mean? Anyway, yeah. So it's just a weird three-way switch. Like, how, all right. But anyway, uh, what was I saying? Um, Bruce Lee shit. movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, changes. yeah. Well, okay. So you start off with um, Big Boss. There, here they call it Fist of Fury. His next movie. I lost you there for a second. Oh, you're back. Okay, here I'm gonna yeah. kill the camera. I just, just I just, I just killed the camera. Yeah. Okay, so his first movie over in Japan, over in uh, China, was um, Fist of Fury. No, 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 fuck, Big Boss. No, we call it Fist of Fury here. Yeah. His second movie in China is called Fist of Fury, but we called it Chinese Connection. <laughs> we just made that shit up. I don't know why it's called Chinese Connection. It's just called Chinese Connection. Then he went to do Way of the Dragon. This was meant to be a trilogy. This was meant to be star on this guy. But then he called starring the same character. But then he got a call from America to come in and do Enter the Dragon. So he went to do Enter the Dragon. And after he died, like shit, uh, we gotta bank on some more Bruce Lee shit. Um, call this one Return of the Dragon. So people get confused and think it's a fucking sequel. So yeah, and then Game of Death, which only got partially finished. Well, the thing, too, about Return of the Dragon, or Way of the Dragon, whatever you want to call it, is initially, that movie was going to be called Enter the Dragon, and then when Bruce Lee, like, America called, and stuff, he's like, fuck it, we're saving that title for America, that's way more important than China, and then he's like, well, we're just going to make, this is going to be my practice movie, we're going to do Return of the Dragon here in China, it's not going to be seen by any Americans, it's not going to be seen by anybody else outside of China, wait till you die. <laughs> and uh, that, that's how that movie was supposed to be, because I think it was one of those ones, like, Bruce Lee's like, I'm going to learn how to become a filmmaking master. You know what I mean? So he went out and he's like, I'm going to study up. I'm going to read everything I possibly can. I'm going to treat filmmaking like a kung fu and make a movie. And it's almost kind of just like interesting in that sense because it's really like, it's literally like someone's first movie, though technically he acted in movies before, other than this one. But like as far as directing it and writing it and putting it together and he even plays like tambourine or something in like the orchestra for some reason. I don't know. He just felt like he had to. He felt like he had a Robert <laughs> Rodriguez this production. <laughs> <laughs> Play. I'll, I'll bang the tambourine. I got this. And you have a hand in every aspect. Exactly. So you'd get to know it. So that's almost like what's the kind of the interesting here is you're kind of watching a guy putting together his first movie. Granted, he's been acting in a couple others. But um, it's like the first time he gets to be in total control and so on. And um, it really is like Return of the Dragon. It's a great movie, but it is super simple. I mean, like it literally takes place in like generally two locations. <laughs> Well, watching this movie, because when I first saw this movie, we were in high school, right when we start, first started making a lot of movies. And watching this, I mean, this goes back to your Pizza Boys uh, issue four, but I was watching this movie like, oh yeah, I remember this feeling. This feeling of like, shit, I could make a movie because no offense to them, this is, this is 
probably better than anything I'll make. But at the exact same time, it's just so simple. It just takes place in this many spots. It's kind. Of, it's not too complicated. You just happen to have a martial arts prodigy as the star. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that was the one thing we were missing was that part. <laughs> yeah, everything else about it looks pretty straightforward. Like, I could have pulled that off. Like, all the bumbling guys. Like, yeah, I could pull that guy off. I can, you know. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the guys. Well, because that's all it is. It's literally, like, Bruce Lee's character. He shows up to Rome, of all places, and there's this Chinese restaurant going on. And um, it's run by, is it like his uncle? Is that who it is? It's his uncle's, if I remember correctly, maybe I'm confused here, because everyone called him uncle. So I'm like, whose yeah. uncle is he, really? <laughs> He's everybody's uncle. He's, He's mine and your uncle. <laughs> he found a way. He's like a tell of the hun. <laughs> yeah, it's just everybody. Related to everybody somehow. Somewhere. He came in everything, so somehow there's a relation there. Um, let's see here. Uh, um... I want to say it's his uncle's friend. That's his uncle's friend. But everyone just calls him uncle. So it's just, yeah, there's a little bit of confusion there. And there's the girl, like, there's the girl there who is, her her dad used to run the restaurant before he died. Now she inherited it. So she's stuck with this thing. And she plays, like, a very, I'll say this, and it's nothing, I'm not going to down the movie too much. I get it. It's your first movie. And plus, you're there mainly for the martial arts scenes. But she's just, like, the most cold boring bitch for like the first 30 minutes of this movie and then once she sees he can actually like you know he's like so what do you do i practice and i fight martial arts every day like, stop doing that you'll kick over a fucking vase like oh shit sorry all right <laughs> and she's like li like now that i'm thinking about it, I'm like she's like literally the only female in this entire movie uh, there's the old bitch who's staring down Bruce Lee when he's in the airport. This movie actually does get across the whole thing of, like, I'll say something this movie does speak on, is at the time being a Chinese guy in another country and how everyone just kind of stares at you and kind of gives... Because they make that a point several times. There's that whole part where, like, there's a lady, like, in his personal bubble just staring at him and he just looks over, smiles at her, and just keeps on moving. This And the, you can tell on his face he's like... Am I going to have to fuck this bitch up? She won't stop staring at me. <laughs> is, this what, is this what Rome's all about? <laughs> well, it's such like a weird era because it's like, you know, it's like, where do you expect this like a great kung fu movie to take place? Uh, how about Rome? Oh, oh okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's also, that's also probably another thing in the budget. It was like, well, let's mix it up because um, Chinese, can, uh, Fist of Fury, I want to say was modern. Yeah, Fist of Fury was modern day. Chinese Connection took place in the late 1800s or early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, something I was going to say earlier, but got sidetracked. There's a slew of unofficial sequels of his, and it would always be like, as you know, in, in Fist of Fury, he, uh, original Fist of Fury, he gets killed at the end. And Big Boss, he goes to jail. And it's one of those things, like, they, like Bruce Lee would come in, oh, I'm his, um, I'm his brother. His twin brother here to avenge him. <laughs> yeah, that's always like what it was. It was like he, did, he couldn't even play Bruce Lee. It's just like, no, no, you got to be somebody who's like him. I, re I really want to know, like, does does Bruce Lee have like an autobiography? I would love to read that. <laughs> the litter, the littler dragon. <laughs> yeah, little dra little dragon. That's it. That that sounds like a '90s kids martial arts movie. What's this movie about? Well, it's Little Dragon. It's about a kid who wishes he was Bruce Lee. And he probably would be white, you know what I mean? They'd, like, at that time period, they wouldn't be, like, an Asian <laughs> kid. It'd be, like, some, like, white kid who wishes he was Asian. There, there'd be his uh, Asian friend. Yeah, the, the Always Asian. eating Cheetos, who's a fat kid, probably. Like, oh, what do you mean you want to go outside and punch people? That sounds dangerous and scary. Why can't we just stay inside and play Sega Genesis? Maybe it would be, like, three ninjas where they just have an Asian grandpa out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly just don't question it be grateful you have this asian grandpa <laughs> he, he cost, can teach you he cost your dad a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> oh what'd you get me dad what'd you get me an asian grandpa it's what i always wanted really in the 90s bow to him son bow I to him I kid you not, any kid in the 90s, if one day they'd be like, oh, here's your grandpa, he just happens to be Japanese, you'd be like, oh my gosh, the possibilities are endless! 
teach me kung fu. Will teaching you? you? Oh, I'm Japanese. I don't teach kung fu. What? Well, well, teach, teach me to be a, a ninja Hadouken. turtle. Um, I guess I can figure that one out. <laughs> that, so I guess. It's like, look, I just, I, I just run a carpentry store down Fifth Street. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you this: one, never been to Japan. Born in America, don't have an accent. Yep. I just thought I couldn't resist the paycheck here, so uh, I'm your Asian grandpa. Yep, that's me. <laughs> for the next two hours, five days a week for the next three months. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, I watched that movie. I, I totally would too. Well, yeah, just like just like a Bruce Lee, you know what I mean, and always taking on the you know the secondary roles that Bruce Lee, but. Um, you know, in Return of the Dragon, yeah, it's like he shows up, he's in Rome. It must be one thing, like, I'm thinking this, because, you know, there's not really a whole lot of special features on this, I guess, unless you got that blue box set, you know? So it's like, you kind of just don't know really how these things went, but I bet you, if anything, of like, why they probably shot it in Rome was one of those ones so Bruce Lee didn't have to do with any, like, movie regulations of China or anything like that, even though I know it's got, like, a golden harvest in the beginning, but probably there was something to be said about, hey, I'm going to go take a team, we're going to go shoot this in Rome. Nobody's going to bother us. I can do whatever I want and learn all my own, you know, ways while I'm out there. And uh, let, let's do it that way. Well, it's definitely a small budget, but at this time, Bruce Lee was, like, the biggest star in China. So, uh, in, like, uh, I know this is probably, like, I didn't really do a whole lot of research on this. I learned this from the Dragon, the Bruce Lee story movie. But in uh, China, Green Hornet was called the Kato Show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like that's what it was. More or less was. He's always saving them. I know. That's, that's what it's all about. But it's kind of funny. It's like, because Bruce Lee, it's it's weird when you think about it. Because Bruce Lee, like as far as like kind of history goes, he's this ginormous icon. But like when you really kind of sum up, it's like he's got uh, four and a half movies and a TV yeah. show. It's it's just so weird to think about it. Like A couple of guest spots on other shows. Yeah. You know, I mean, a couple child appearances and certain Chinese ones that nobody sees. Unless I guess well, you he was a child actor back in the day, but it was still just because you were a child actor doesn't mean you weren't living on the streets or getting into like fights because it was still a small industry back then. Yeah, especially you know in China and so on too. But mm -hmm. but um, it, it's just so it's weird to think because it's like at the end of the day, who's more popular in life, Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee? And it's probably Bruce Lee. And it's like, Jackie Chan's like, you know, I've done over a hundred movies and no matter what, I'll never have that same kind of like iconicness that Bruce Lee has, sadly enough. Didn't he get kicked by Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon? Like, wasn't he uh, one of the guys trying to corner his sister? I think there's a story. I don't know if this is true, but I think there's a story about um, when they were filming Enter the Dragon, Jackie Chan's with the guys cornering his sister, and then later all those guys kind of come back later, and he kicks all their asses. And I want to say he accidentally actually kicked Jackie Chan down. He's like, "Oh man, I'm sorry," and just helps him up to his feet. Yeah, well, Jackie Chan is in there of the dragon, and he takes like that really high fall that's in there, which at one point was like a world record fall. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to play, I haven't watched that one in a while, so I couldn't tell you exactly where that's at. But I just know I can picture like that fall scene. Or whatever. So it was in there. And I was kind of wondering when I was watching Return of the Dragon again. I'm like, was Jackie Chan like one of the the extra stunt guys in this one too? Because I thought he was in a couple Bruce Lee ones. But um, I didn't see anything in there that kind of like recognized of him. But um, but yeah, it's just that weird thing. It's just like, yeah, it's like it's that thing. It's like he's not, I guess it's like no different than like Kurt Cobain. Like Kurt Cobain has such like iconic status for really only having four albums, you know? And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's weird how that is. It's like, you know what I mean? Well, I guess the thing about Kurt Cobain is he was so much in the public's eye and then all the, all the Kurt and Courtney stuff that came out after the fact and stirred a bunch of controversy and drama where Bruce Lee, he has, yeah, these couple of things. And he did like some interviews and he wrote a book, but I guess it was more of just like, oh, wow, he's like the, he, he was a, he was a Chinese guy in America at a time. It was really hard to be a Chinese guy in America, you know, when it was hard to actually get hired and he became a superstar and I think Enter the Dragon is the first big budget American martial arts movie. I think it, it, it literally is. I don't think there is anything beforehand. I mean, there might be some weird, obscure film that, like, you know, someone might have made. But, like, yeah, nothing of that caliber. I mean, it's Warner Brothers. 
you know, they got a lot behind there. That one's also got, I've always wanted to get to, there's a Super Tutus special edition Blu-ray of End of the Dragon that I thought it'd be nice to own, because I just have the regular old-fashioned DVD one. It still has some special features on it, but... um. Same thing here, yeah. But yeah, there's like that two disc one and so on. Because that is, I mean, I think that's what makes, I mean, that's what makes him the icon. Is he's the thing that like, he pretty much brought martial arts movies to America, made them popular. And that's where, like, you know, you get the 70s. That's where you get that whole run of martial arts films and so on. And they, they a little bit peter out in the 80s. They're still there and so on. But then they have their second coming. Pretty much, I feel like Rush Hour is the second big coming of martial arts movies where, like, it really had another comeback and it was super popular till about the mid 2000s. And then it just petered out. And I always think about, it, I'm like, man, there hasn't been a kung fu movie in American cinemas in so long. I think what helped kind of get a lot of the uh, 90s kung fu movies going again was Jackie Chan, like Rush Hour, you said. And then um, Drunken Master. Well, they re- a lot of they re-released yo- Drunken Master because that movie was already older. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, they uh, like they did something kind of smart where they just like they literally brought Drunken Master back, and then they kind of like sold it as sort of a different type of movie. Like they made it almost mm-hmm. more goofier than it really was. Uh, they and- gave it, I think they gave it like funny voiceover type shit to make it more of a comedy. Yeah, because they say like, because you know, it's the Jackie first Chan, he's funny, whatever. Because you watch the first Drunken Master, and that movie's super serious. I mean, like it's got funny stuff in it just because it's Drunken Master, but like. That first film is, like, a legitimate, serious, like, hardcore martial arts movie. I love that one so much. It's got so badass training scenes in it and so on. And then the second one, like, even if you watch it in the Chinese cut, like, it's it's a little bit more goofier. It definitely has, like, the C. It's kind of almost like Lethal Weapon 2, you know. At first, we're, we're talking about suicide in the first one. Then the next one, we're just having a good old time with the family. But, um, you know, the second one's still got... He, he loses that German girl. She gets drowned, and he has to wake up underwater with her and then go... You know, take out his, his GMC of the Dooleys and pull down that house. <laughs> I'm Lethal Weapon 2? Yeah. <laughs> yeah not, That's not the only... <laughs> I'm just double checking. Like, did I miss a part? <laughs> he, had a, he had a German girlfriend and she died and got drowned in the water. And so Jackie Chan gets it as... Like, I don't know how he had a GMC. Because doesn't that movie take place in the 1800s? Well, whatever. We're not going to question it. <laughs> whatever. He found a way. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. It's like... um. Well, I want to say this about Lethal Open 2, because, you know, there's a whole joke like, diplomatic immunity. They say diplomatic. Like, give me my diplomatic case. Give me my diplomatic sheet. You know, they say that like 12 times in that fucking movie. I just got to say that while we're on topic of that. But, um, yeah, no, a lot of those um, movies, I think a lot of the movies actually, you, you, you I might be mispronouncing his name here, but Yu Woon Ping who was a martial arts choreographer. I think he did the first Drunken Master, at least. He mm-hmm. did a lot of movies through the 70s onward. He did The Matrix. Yep, that, that was he like his the, big, I feel like, American breakout. Yeah, Kill Bill. Like, if there is a major marsh, if there is a major motion picture and had a big badass art, martial arts scene in, like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, he was helping with it. Yeah. So, yeah. And it, it's kind of a bummer, because I think, the last kung fu movie I can think that came to theaters was uh, Man the Iron Mask. I mean, that's like kind of kung fu with like weapons and so on type movie. But that's mm, a... um, Fearless. Jet Li's Fearless. That's before that one, though. The... Man of the Iron Mask? We're talking with Leo? No, no, no. Um, oh, you mean no, Man with the Iron Fist? Man with the Iron Fist. Did I say Man of the Iron Mask? Yeah. No, I meant Man of the, Man of the Iron Fist. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to correct you, but I was like, I know there's sword fighting in that, but I mean... I mean, I guess that's a martial art. Yeah, no, 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 Man of the Iron Fist. That's the last movie I can think of that was, like, a major motion picture. I mean, granted, yeah, you, you can go to Walmart, and there's always some kung fu movie there that, like, just didn't get, like, released anywhere but straight to DVD. But, um, it's such a bummer, too, because I just, I miss those days, you know what I mean? Like, seems like not even, like, I don't know, maybe... Jet Li's just really got to pull one back. I mean, there was that Jackie Chan one with Pierce Brosnan, but that was more like Jackie Chan with guns and explosives going full on Rambo to Pierce Brosnan's property in Ireland. I just liked how we'll get back on Way of the Dragon. I know we got really sidetracked somehow. I liked how I like how like they were teasing um, Fearless, which is one of my favorite martial arts movies of recent. Like no, I guess recent years, as in ten years or whatever. Um, I like how like this is Jet Li's final performance. <laughs> Uh, fearless and then you know it's just like you know it's like that's a hell of a movie to go out on and then just goes like a year in he's like yeah I realized something uh, punching people in the fucking face is what pays my bill so it's what sends my sk- kids to school so guess what yeah sign me up for Expendables yeah 
Hey, uh, Jackie Chan, you want to do a movie that's like Last Action Hero, but of Kung Fu? Yep, Forbidden Kingdom. <laughs> Let's get that money rolling again. Yeah, I wish they had more Kung Fu movies going back to theaters, but uh, maybe we'll get there again one day, hopefully. Yeah, hope it, like the 1997 like Jackie Chan resurgence, hopefully the, uh, it will come once more and uh, we can bring that back because it's such a bummer not having that in movies. But, um, and Bruce Lee b brought it to America late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this movie being 72 or whatnot, so he gets to Rome, and he's in, now he's at like his uncle's you know, restaurant here, and then you learn right off the bat that there's these mobster guys that kind of show up, and they want, you know, they want to take this whole place over. I don't feel like they even explain exactly why they want to take it over, but they want to take it over. I think real estate, they're just, well, that's the thing, because let's be honest, and this isn't me beating up this genre, because I love this genre, martial arts movies, essentially it's always, I want this building. Why? Fuck you. I got money. That's why. And he could always... It's almost kind of like a Western. They go by the same format of a Western. There's somebody that wants this spot of land for some reason. He keeps trying to pay him off. They don't move. And he's got the baddest people working for him. And then eventually he goes and hires the baddest motherfucker he can find near the end. I said, well, then I also like, too, because there's this one villain guy that pretty much is like the boss is like, you know, right-hand man. And he's almost like... He's this, like, weird gay cross between, like, Mick Jagger and, like, Shigeru Miyamoto. That's, like, the best way I can describe him. He does look kind of like... I didn't think of the Mick Jagger thing at first, but looking at him, I'm like, you know what? I kind of see what you mean. His look, name he's is... Kinda got the, he's kind of got that Mick Jagger haircut. Ping-O-Wee. <laughs> ping o we, But it also, in the American version, Paul. <laughs> Paul Wee Pong L. Now, on your copy, do you have the Chinese version on yours? Or do you just have, like, the one that only has, like, the English dub? It has, it has uh, just the English version only. Does it have, like, the red cover of Bruce Lee on there? It has the red cover, yeah. Okay, so we got the same one then. Yeah, I know. Well, they have, they have a couple, because there would be those ones that would be, like, okay, Chinese Connection, or Big Boss, however you want to go with it. Wait, wait. No, no, no. Fist of Fury. Fist of Fury or Chinese Connection. The 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 uh, one where this master is poisoned and he's going against the Japanese school. That one, just to clarify. Yeah. Um, that one, the copyright on that one's very loose because you would see that one on a bunch of those random, you know, like six movies for four bucks. You know, you'd see that on a bunch of, of those. But you would never really find Way of the Dragon or Big Boss on there or any or any of those ones too much. Yeah, I'm not too sure exactly how it is, because I know it's like once it kind of becomes a... When there's foreign movies, especially back in the day, it's just like copyright, such like a flim-flammy thing between there. It's same thing, it's like, you know, it's like you go to China and they just take all the U.S. movies and just sell them on the street and nobody cares because that's just how it is, you know? And it's like, well, I'm like, well they, we, they kind of do the same thing of Chinese movies here, you know? Yeah, it's a fair trade. But, um... But, yeah, I can't remember where I was going at now. But, oh, yeah, they got, they got the guy who's just like the the Mick Jagger, Shigeru Miyamoto cross guy. And he's just this kind of like gay rapist type guy, just kind of coming up to everybody like Bruce Lee and everything like that. And I didn't think of it, but I guess if there was an Asian Rolling Stones cover band, <laughs> this guy, that dude has the look down. I didn't even think about it. It's probably just <laughs> the seventies. He just has that Mick Jagger kind of like dressing style. <laughs> I could imagine him doing the chicken walk with poached, with like, you know, like duck lips and all that kind of shit and slapping his hands and then pulling out a harmonica at some point. I could totally imagine that. <laughs> you know, and of course they just show up and then like, at first Bruce Lee's not really there to do too much. He's, he's just brought in, like, I don't know if he's brought in to be like, hey, you're here to wash dishes or something for your uncle. Oh, you have oh, he's there to fuck shit up. Yeah, it's like, no, 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 like, no, we brought in um, our kung fu, like, relative. <laughs> Well, no, because everyone's there, like, that's the thing about this movie is, when he gets there, everyone's just, like, they're in the back practicing karate, and they're all, like, <laughs> this hive mind. Bunch of Chinese guys, like, practicing karate in the background. Well, that's the thing, they're, they're, like, this hive mind of, hi, hi, oh, look, who's that? There's, there's, like, he's, like, look, who's this guy? Oh, yeah, you're the chug, you're gonna help us out, ha, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm this guy, I'm, I'm Robin, I'm, I'm Jimmy, I'm, then there's, like, the one guy, like, what, they all, there's, like, it says, Rob, there's Robert, Jimmy, Tony, and then I think, like, Ah, uh, Quinn. There's like, there's the one guy who's like, no, nah, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't convert. I'm still who I am. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just love how they just give like, give us some good old American names there for the dub one. I didn't realize this. Jimmy, his real name apparently is Little Unicorn. Oh, I see why they gave him Jimmy. 
<laughs> like, that seems like a Jimmy. <laughs> Literal translation of his. Oh God damn! I don't need your fucking Miss Mar M Captain Marvel ad. F I'm trying to read this shit. Captain Marvel pops up over the fucking. It's literally not like oh the ad like above the bar. It's like literally over the paragraph. Like what the fuck? All right. Anyway, and he was alive till 19. All right. It doesn't say when he was born, but it, we all we know he died in 1987. All right. Oh. But uh, according to Poor this, bastard. yeah. Yeah, little unicorn, literal translation of his Chinese stage name, Kei Luen, which means unicorn in Sui, meaning little, meaning small, was one of Bruce Lee's best friends since childhood. Along with Bruce, the two were often cast of ju juvenile delinquents in Hong Kong films. One of their earliest films together was Little Chiang, 1950, when Bruce Short was... Okay, okay, that goes on for a while. But yeah. All right, so Bruce Lee was kind of like an Adam Sandler that would punch people. He liked to bring on a lot of his friends into his movies. Well, that's pretty much kind of like what it was. That's like how um, Kareem of Du Jabbar gets into uh, Into the Dragon, because he was taking classes a lot with of Bruce his Lee. Students, yeah. A lot of his students were in there. Like uh, Robert Wall, who's in this movie, was one of his students. And he was the villain, not the villain, but he's the guy who was like uh, the right-hand man to Han and in Enter the Dragon. And he before that, he was had him in this thing. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. And in and, uh, Enter the Dragon, he was the guy who tried to fuck his sister and got a scar for it before. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, I like how these guys are all outside, like, practicing, like, karate and everything. Like, oh, this is the best martial art there is, is karate and so on. And it's like, oh, no, 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 you haven't seen Bruce Lee's, like, he does Chinese boxing, which you never hear that phrase anymore. That's, like, totally the old-fashioned way, like, uh, they, they do what? Kung fu? That Nobody's gonna understand that. Call it Chinese boxing. He's like, Chinese boxing! We show it now! But there's the one guy who pushes against the grade. Everyone's like, oh, he's gonna be here, he's gonna rough these guys up! And there's the one guy like, hm, we'll see about that. Yeah. He's kind of like that for a while. Oh, it looks and so tough. And there's a few points where Bruce Lee actually, he doesn't actually get really fight till he's like 20 minutes in because he keeps on accidentally missing the action, which I thought is kind of, that has to be kind of intentional, kind of like, all right, we're expecting Bruce Lee to come in here and just fuck things up. But I think it's meant to be sort of a joke, like kind of like he's, you expect that to happen. But he's like, oh, what happened? He was in the bathroom and all yeah. this shit went down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he's one of those ones that just kind of comes out a little bit late to everything. He doesn't realize that the Mick Jagger looking dude... Um, his name, his name in the movie is Ho. That's his character's name, just Ho. Ho, because he is that a Ho. That Ho comes out. That dirty Ho comes out <laughs> and says like, and Bruce Lee was adjusting his belt, and the guy he Bruce Lee bumps in the guy adjusts the belt for him and starts, like slaps him in the stomach. Be careful now. Like, <laughs> okay, walks out like you just were playing grab ass with the guy that just threatened this girl's life. <laughs> well, you know, when in Rome. Literally. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know. It's like you really don't get to see. I think it's like later on when they go back outside after it like, gets roughed up and so on. Then Bruce Lee finally gets to, like, you know, they pull out all the pads and everything like that. And he gets to show off. And he kicks that one guy like like the trash cans or whatever. It's kind of like an iconic scene. It's like Chinese boxing, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And then they're all like, yeah, let's burn these geese. Get rid of this shit. This Japanese stuff sucks. Which I feel like that's always like... Such, like, a Japanese-Chinese, like, kung fu movie, martial arts movies. There's always those movies where it's just like, what's better, karate or kung fu? There's so many of those kind of, like... Like, and they really want to put that into you. Like, almost like they're trying to force a religion onto you. Like, no, no, no. We'll, this movie will convert you into kung fu. No, 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 no. This movie will convert you to karate. <laughs> well, I remember watching this. Um, there was... Uh, not this. It was just Bruce Lee movies in general. I mean... Chinese Connection here, Fist of Fury, China. Um, that one, the villains are Japanese. They're going against a Japanese dojo who they believe poisoned their uh, teacher. And it's that, so that, you know, they often would use like slang like, these goddamn Japs or something like that. And they use it a little bit in this too. Because at some point, they get a Japanese fighter to come in. Because like later, he, he goes and gets multiple guns to go against Bruce Lee. Who's Tang Lao? Ting Lao. I think it's how you pronounce. I think it's it's spelled Ting Lung, but I think it's Ting Lao. That's how you pronounce it. And um, Robert Wall, who plays Bob, and uh, Ing Sik Wung plays Japanese fighter, and they come in to you know they they they're the first wave of hired guns to come after Bruce Lee. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that, it, it kind of makes sense because really in China, like the Japanese, they're like your Nazis. You know, at the end of the day, these are the guys who occupied your country for a while. You know, what I mean, they caused all sorts of havoc. They just destroyed and ravaged your whole entire villages. So that's pretty much just like how, like, you know, for the longest time, like, Germans, and even still to this day, like, are, like, bad guys in movies. And that's kind of like what the Japanese are to the Chinese. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, especially for as long as that was happening right there. I mean, this isn't that far away from World War II. No, yeah, I see, think about it. Yeah, it's really just right around the corner at the the end of the Mm day. Yeah, so, out of that... Yeah, I, I, I kind of see why, it's, why that's still there. But um, there was even Sonny Chiba and Bruce Lee. I'm not sure if they had a massive rivalry, but there's a little bit of a rivalry. But there is actually a movie in one of his movies, The Bodyguard, which is kind of funny because he's playing himself. <laughs> he's like, me, Sonny Chiba, the actor, is giving a press conference and waging a war on all crime. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to roll up my sleeves and take care of this myself. (laughs) Why? Someone tried to mug me while I was in the plane the other day, and I got tired of it. I'm like, well, this makes for an interesting movie. When it happens to me, it's serious. So. (laughs) Well, I feel like that's, like, what anybody wants. It's, like, almost like, it's like if it was the 80s and Arnold Schwarzenegger said that he was going to start a one-man war on crime. You know what I mean? (laughs) This sounds so cool. (laughs) Well, anyway, I got off track, but there's, there's a part when... I don't think he's even there. I just think it's meant to get across, like, um, <clears throat> fandom and all that. But I want to say he's, uh, there's, like, two guys sitting there. It's like, this is how Sonny Chiba would do it. Hits, like, this, poc- like, you know, punching bag. Well, here's how Bruce Lee would do it. And they kind of have this quick conversation. It's my, that's not saying which one's better. We're like, oh, well, here's two different ways to go about it. Show respect to Bruce. Show respect to Sonny. So... Yeah, it is always, like, an interesting way. But that's totally, like, you know, the rivalry thing at that time period, too, especially, you know. But, um, God, what part are we at now? We're at the part where, like, okay, so he's fighting all, like, the, you know, the Chinese, like, it's, like, weird. It's, like, they got to run this restaurant, though, like, all the employees are outside practicing martial arts. Well, they got the time for it. Every, <laughs> Shit, every time nobody the customer in walks in. Every time a customer walks in, like, they're like, holy fuck, uncle comes in. We got a fucking customer. Like, uh, uncle... Uncle Wang is always very nervous. He's always like, oh, let's just not get any, start any trouble, guys. Come on, let's just all work together here. Really, when, at the end of the day, what this movie is, is you could, you could talk about the story, but it's really as simple as um, they came in here, we fought them, they went away. They came back, we fought them again, they went away. Bruce Lee pulled out um, nunchucks. <laughs> yeah. This, time, this one time, they tried to sniper me through a window during Chinese New Year's. But I found that motherfucker and threw a knife in his ass. Um, some point, they kidnap the girl. We find the girl. We beat the fuck out of everybody in the room. And the guy's still stupid enough to come after for us later. But he gets Chuck Norris. So, that's kind of, I'm not you know, I'm not trying to be a dick there. But it's, it's a good movie. But you're really here for the kung fu. That's the Yeah, because the here. kung fu scenes are, like, amazing in this movie. And that's, like, really the selling point. Yeah, and we haven't got to, that, to the Chuck Norris part. That's, like, kind of like the icing on the cake for this film. Because I think that's what makes this movie super legendary is the fact that bruce lee found chuck norris gave him his first you know role in any movie like before this he was just a you know karate martial arts champion of like wherever the heck he was champion at you know and then take him to the next level and it's like it's that kind of thing that like probably the time period just like well here's just a guy who's just a really good athlete that's why i just want him to be in my movie you don't realize that chuck norris will be you know go on to become like a super action star, you know what I mean? And then not only that, and then, you know, get Walker, Texas Ranger and all the other kind of things he's done and still just like kick ass even today. It seems like no matter what he's doing. Well, plus at the same time, it's, it's just one of those things like everyone talks about no one could ever beat Chuck Norris. My, well, there's that one thing. There's a, well, that's always like, even those Chuck Norris jokes, there's always like the, the only person who could defeat Chuck Norris is Bruce Lee. Mm, yeah. So, it's one of those things. I will say, some of those Chuck Norris jokes can make you kind of chuckle a little bit. Not that I... There's a period where I didn't like him just because I got tired of hearing him all the time. But after a while, like, actually, you know, they they are pretty... It's been long enough, you know. Like, there's only, like, Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the earth down. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Stupid shit like it's that. So, or, I always was one. No, I, I've never kind of... I've never researched it either. But I've always kind of wondered, like, where the hell did that all start from? Because that, that was, like... 
Like, literally, when someone says random humor, that is, like, the biggest definition of just something super fucking random. Or it's like, he doesn't sleep, he waits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I just always wonder, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, because Chuck Norris, it's like, really, at the end of the day, I mean, like, I guess you could say action hero-wise, he's kind of in that, like, B.C. category. It's not saying that he's not amazing, but, you know, he's not Stallone, and he's not, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's kind of, like, second tier, but I almost even feel like John claude Van Damme and, you know, like, uh, Dolph Lundgren almost even seem a little bit bigger than Chuck Norris at the end of the day. I think it's a little bit of that, and plus Chuck Norris is this, he comes across, he's that, well, obviously he's meant to be that good old American, you know, Texas boy, he's literally Walker, Texas Ranger, but he does all this martial arts, so it's just this weird combination, you know what I mean? Uh, did you ever see the movie Sidekick? No, I never did. Do you know what that movie is? No, I don't think so. I don't remember all the details, but... I remember as a kid, because I actually saw this movie on a school field trip, of all things. And there's this kid who lives, like, a rough life, and he's always bullied, he's always, and he's into martial arts and all that. And he idolizes Chuck Norris. And he'll have these fantasies where he is, like, on an action, on an action movie with Chuck Norris. And, like, he's, he's, like, you know, they're going through the jungle with machine guns and all that. And he's there with them. And they're bros. And at some point he writes a few letters to Chuck Norris. And he's in this martial arts tournament. And then, like, Chuck Norris is in the, is in the audience. Like, he's, like, I wrote you some letters. Like, I know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> It, it literally is like Last Action Hero. It sounds like almost. This this sounds well, amazing like, to me. I, I want to see it, this. He now. doesn't go. He doesn't literally go into Chuck Norris movies, but he has these fantasies about Chuck Norris movies. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so it's like it's like telling kids like, hey kids, right here idols long enough, and maybe they'll show up to your recital or whatever. <laughs> yeah, one of those ones like that. But like some kid tweets at Kanye West enough, and he shows up to someone's you know talent show. He says like, oh. Connie's here like, yo, that shit was bullshit. <laughs> you owe me for the we plane ticket genius? over here. I want a refund. <laughs> you ain't a fucking genius like me. <laughs> I can just see Kanye just like, like charging some kid for a refund on his private jet over. Not worth it. <laughs> but he said you're the next Justin Bieber. <laughs> you know, I was expecting some shit. I, I didn't know you were just going to lip sync a song from Moana. <laughs> yeah. It was confusing, too. Which one are you? <laughs> you, ain't buff enough, you ain't buff enough to be The Rock. Take that shit right now. <laughs> you ever hug The Rock? He gives good hugs. <laughs> He's like, you don't hug The Rock, The Rock hugs you. Even if you think you you're let it happen. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but really, okay, we get back to Return of the Dragon, and you get that, you get that Chuck Norris battles bruce lee thing and that right there is it's almost like it's like at the time period nobody knows of it because it's just like okay here's just this other guy and in china it's just like you got some hairy white guy to fight oh, okay uh sure bruce whatever you decide you're fighting a fucking bear <laughs> yeah because that's all chuck norris is like i feel like bruce lee he's just a took, patch of fur yeah he, he just he, i felt like okay bruce lee knew how he's supposed to look on screen he didn't like let any of those secrets off the chuck norris uh hey chuck could you gain some weight uh but what do you want to do just just eat it anything and everything you want doesn't matter just eat donuts oh okay bruce that sounds like you're the expert on movie making hey uh bruce uh what do you think about this chest hair or these weird back shoulder pads I got? You have shoulder pads? Well, it's really just weird hair that kind of grows on my <laughs> shoulders and nowhere else on my back. Should I shave these? No, no, just leave those there. They're going to think that's awesome. Oh, okay. You know best, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> he takes, they meet up there. He's like, Bruce Lee is just like trimmed and shaved as possible. Like, the fuck? I, I'm already here, I guess. Shit. <laughs> he just like puts down the bag of donuts. Like, okay. Bruce, you know what's best. Yes, I do. Let's... And I mean, like, it's one of those ones, like, it's that kind of thing that, like, for, like, martial arts, I feel like, you don't technically, I mean, I know that, like, it's, you know, if you have the guy who's just, like, jacked and ripped, it just makes it look like he can do martial arts better than the other guy, but technically it's like, that doesn't really mean anything. The guy who might not even look athletically fit could be the best guy at martial arts. Well, that's not the case here. <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't work out here. Bruce Lee still wins, but, um, you still get an amazing battle. They kind of like, and I love the way that they do it. They, they shoot it like at the Coliseum, though you couldn't shoot any film at the Coliseum. So what they did is they just like stole a couple of scenes here and there 
And then they just kind of had it where it just sort of happens in like this aisle way. And it sort of has like a back projector going on of just like looking into the Coliseum. It still looks cool, but like you can see kind of like the easy, low budget way to go about it to kind of, you know, steal this shot. The shots they did get, they did it like all guerrilla film style. Like no one's no one's looking. Like my thing's like, what are you worried about? You're Bruce Lee. You can just like kick him away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what's some Roman? You Chuck Norris for backup. <laughs> yeah, literally. You can bring in the wall, Robert Wall, too, if you want. I don't know. And that's the thing, though. It's like Shit, you could take over Rome. What the fuck are you worried about? You literally <laughs> could have conquered Rome right there. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got two legendary figures that are unstoppable. Well, you know, unstoppable unless... With Robert Wall helping you out, too. Yeah, exactly. A dude named Little Unicorn. He probably could throw a punch. Yeah, exactly. Throw a punch of a unicorn. Just rainbow shootout. Yeah. <laughs> But it is what it's like that most like legendary battle in the making, but no one knows about it at that time period. It, it kind of like leads you into like almost like an expendables like world and almost a what if. Because the other interesting thing too is that like Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee are like the exact same age. They're both born, I think, in 1940, I want to say. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost like you see Chuck Norris now, it's like Bruce Lee could be there right now next to him. So. Oh, they would have, if um, Bruce Lee was alive, he would have a scene in one of the expendables movies. Exactly. <laughs> just like <laughs> Bruce Lee's hand comes out, just pushes gently back. Not this time. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Why don't you? Why don't you go? Hey, Jet Lee, why don't you go stand over with uh, Bruce Lie? You guys both got the same last name, Lie. Oh, that's Lee. No, it's Lie. <laughs> I'll say Jet Lee definitely did his own thing. Oh yeah, he no, no, definitely... I, I definitely, I love Jet Lee yeah. for everything he does, but. <laughs> You just know that, like, it's almost like one of those ones. If someone said, like, hey, uh, by the way, we can uh, resurrect uh, Bruce Lee for one day of shooting if you want to put him in the Expendables. Oh, boy. You'd say, like, I want to train once with Bruce Lee, and then you just feel like a total bitch. Like, I can't keep up. How does he do those fucking things where he just totally sticks his chest out while his shoulders arch back and makes makes himself look like he's like 10 times buffer than what he really is there's that weird stretch thing he was doing like I mean, all right here's like my time to do my... his lats he's like <laughs> and he's making all those weird yep. noise. a uh, fun fact he actually did most in the dubbing he did most of the male voices in this which i'm wondering did I he do the Ch chinese did... dubbing i don't think it's in the american dubbing okay well in that case i was gonna say did he do the black dude he's like hey man got any chinese spare ribs <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's that guy. But it's just like these guys just show up, and it's just like, and he's just like, yo, man, what's going on? There's the one guy who just, there's the one, like, fat Italian dude with the pompadour who's just like, mamma mia, the one, he looks like, like, he looks like, like, you know, everybody's, like, drunken uncle in a flannel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I forgot about all those characters. Yeah, they got, they got that weird assortment of, like, misfits, I guess is the best way to kind of describe it, coming in. The, well, they're not, they're not, the, they're not like, the toughest guys. They're meant to be, like, the cowardly guys. But the original, all the guys working at the restaurant just can't m match these guys for whatever reason. But after a few training sessions with Bruce Lee, they got it down. because he, he, he worked like, that Japanese martial arts style out of him. Yeah, he just kicked it all of him. Just like, stand right here. And he like, just transferred a little bit of his gung fu into him. Just like, oh, I get it now. I see. He's like, I'm going to kick each and every single one of you into this trash pile. If you can get up, you pass. Yeah, so throw your gi down in there. If. <laughs> so, and that whole thing... I just thought the whole part was when they have, like, well, they're all going at him one at a time. And what he, every time he's like, go at him! Go get him! And he has, like, a stick or something. Or a pool cue. And he's the last one, and by that point he's like, Mamma mia! Like, a really bad, poor dubbing, and he runs away, and Bruce, he's like, oh, I'm not letting this bitch get away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, he's like, strip scorpion, like, get over here! <laughs> well, that's cool. the cool thing, too, is, like, Bruce Lee, he's like, this whole point, he's like, he's whittling away all these, like, pretty much, like, um thugs basically gang you know nope. these guys just work for the 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 uh the rich roman guy well i mean like bruce lee's got like all these like throwing darts that he's kind of got this whole time that like whenever anybody's got a gun or something like that for some reason he's just got enough he's just like pew, 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 and just throwing these throwing darts at people yeah yeah they just like I don't, this is the proof of, he's just i guess at some point he's like can i get a gun I'm like yeah pretty easily he's like all right 
do I can take you to the store? No, no, I got my own thing. And you just see him later, like, carving, like, darts. Like, <laughs> I'll prove these motherfuckers. Show them what's up. We probably just took that lady's, like, you know, like, like coffee table and just flipped it over and started shaving it down. Once she saw him fuck a couple of dudes up, she went from being very cold and, like, you ruined everything to being like, oh, no, it's fine. Do kung fu in my house. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's okay now. You know. Yeah, that character's a little bit weird, almost. Uh, well, you know, she she's just kind of there as just a plot device, more or less. Yeah, I mean, she's she's, it, this, she's literally the Princess Peach just to get captured so we could, like, have a reason to go save her. It's She's essentially just there. It's, it's, this whole thing is more or less a, an excuse to showcase different cool martial arts scenes. And if that's what you're into, that's fine. That's not me bringing this movie down. There's a few other things it gets along the way, uh... W- which I thought was interesting of, like, I didn't really pick up on it when I first saw it, but just kind of, like, you know, being a dude in another country, especially, you know, a Chinese dude in the place like Rome, how it's got to be feel really out of place. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the thing, too, is that this movie literally, like, because you don't really notice it when you first watch it, but it's, like, once you kind of hear what it's all about, it's, like, almost, like, I think this is supposed to be sort of, like, his, like, El Mariachi, you know, the same way that Robert Rodriguez was, like, okay, we're gonna go shoot El Mariachi down in Mexico, and it's not, we're not really trying to sell it or anything, which is, like, we're gonna learn how to really make a movie by making a movie, and then it just happens to be, like, oh, shit, we can actually sell this? Oh, okay, uh, sure. Yeah, it kind of so has sadly, a little bit of that vibe. Bruce Lee probably didn't get to see other than the Chinese profits. It's probably like, later on, it just made tons of money for America. For some guy in America. Just, yeah, yeah. Plus, when you hear, like, Bruce Lee died at, like, what was it? 32, 33? What was it? It was something like that. Cause it's, well, let's say if he was born in 1940, what year? Did he die in 1974? He died in 1973, I believe. 73, so... 1973. So he died at 32. He died at 32. 32. Yeah, which, that's one of those things, like, I am a useless piece of shit. <laughs> I know, just, like, think about, like, how much he gets accomplished, how he's the icon, and then it's, like, then you go down by, like, an aneurysm. That's always, like, such a weird, like, idea, too. Well, that's why you still get people who have these different theories, like, he, he wouldn't play ball with the Chinese triads or whatever, so you get all these different, uh... Cut theories of how he died and like you know it's like the, the elvis presley type theories yeah yeah which you know I, I i like to believe i if you said oh one of these things could be true and that's that he's living a secret life he's alive and he's just training up in a mountain saving the world and we just don't know it or something all right cool i i'd I like to believe that but you know chances are it was just an aneurysm so yeah well, and th- that's always kind of like, it sounds so weird, but like those kind of like deaths, like even in real life or so on, it's like, I always kind of like when you have those in movies, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost that kind of, I call it like the, like when your main like action hero, like, well, how does he die? Well, he actually trips at the bottom of the stairs, falls backwards and hits his neck. And that's what gets him. Cause I feel like that's like the real life death. That's what gets you. It's like an aneurysm. It's what gets you. I mean, you want to go out in this cool, epic like battle, but you know, sometimes just, that's just how it is. It's just real life gets in the way. Well, it's so weird because you could hear a story about someone falling out of like a five-story building and landing on a car and surviving and then like eventually be able to walk again. But then you hear a story about like an aneurysm or a dude like hit his head at a table at a weird angle and now he's dead or whatever. You know, it's like those are paralyzed neck down. Like you hear those kind of stories like shit. I, are we fragile as fuck or invulnerable as fuck? I can't tell. Yeah, it's, it's like the Billy Mays death. That was the one that's like, oh shit, you gotta be careful there. Dude, you hit your head real hard, dude. Don't go to sleep, dude. Don't Billy Mays on me. <laughs> Don't be- I Well, I remember somebody told me, like, he, it was, uh, bef- right when it happened, Billy Mays. Someone told me it was a cocaine overdose. I, mean, I can believe that. <laughs> I can believe that. Yeah, just- I mean, but, but it was apparently, you know, hit his head and went to sleep. But I could totally see Billy Mays being one of those guys, like, <laughs> okay. I got a warehouse full of this shit and some recording equipment. Let's I'm sell on it. it. <laughs> just like makes all these videos and edits them himself. Just distributes, does it over the course of a week. <laughs> yeah, doesn't go to sleep. <laughs> he's always like Billy Mays here. Like it's always like a jump scare, really. Whenever his commercials would come on. <laughs> yeah, you'd just be watching. It'd be you know, it could be like late at night, be a fa- about to fall asleep, and Billy Mays here. Fuck. All right. <laughs> like, shit. Did Jason just pop in? What the hell just happened? Yeah, so. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. I always like Billy Mays. 
But um, just like Billy Mays, the thing is, Bruce Lee's legacy, no matter what, it will always kind of last. And though, though you technically only have four and a half movies really to check out by him, you know, it's like... They're all pretty solid. The only one that's a little iffy is um, Game of Death, but that's not his fault. And that's a movie they're trying to piece together. Yeah. Well, you know, they, 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 they salvaged what they could... But when you hear what the original was, it it would sound like real, sound way cooler. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, because I, I think there's only really like 25 minutes or so in that movie of Bruce Lee. I think the rest of it's all kind of like filler. There was uh, so here's what happened. There was like um, actual probably at the end of the day, 10 to 15 minutes of usable footage, and then they had to kind of make the rest up. And then years later, they found the rest of the footage. And they're able to cobble together 20 or 30, maybe 40 minutes of it. But it was just kind of shown. They showed just like some of the different fight scenes and how it was him and like a team of guys working their way up this tower fighting one guy at a time. But we only really saw just the Bruce Lee part. We didn't see where he had the other guys fighting along with him. Yeah, so there's all this kind of extra stuff to it, too. It was almost kind of like, you know, proto raid. Yeah, well, there's the, the movie, not the bug spray. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, well, you see that like that tower kind of battles and like a lot of kind of things and like even like video games and so on kind of use that like, you know, climbing up just like how Game of Death or not Game of Death, but um, how uh, Enter the Dragon pretty much for like any like video game martial arts movie. It's like they just use the Game of Death style, which really is it's one of those weird ones where you can't really go wrong with it. I mean, that's what Mortal Kombat did. That's kind of what Street Fighter did. That's what Dead or Alive did. It always kind of works, you know. It's it was one you, you may have heard this, but did you hear what the Ben Affleck mo- uh, directed Batman movie was going to be? Was it going to be an Enter the Dragon Batman movie? In Arkham, the Game of Death in Arkham. See, that sounds badass. Yeah, but it didn't happen. So yeah. What, what if Bruce Lee played Batman? I can get behind it. You know? That'd be pretty sweet. I mean, be, be, be that was one's like that's like that one where like you don't really expect. You're like, yeah, kind of like The Rock playing anybody. It's like, yeah, you know what? Bruce Lee could probably play anybody. Shit, Bruce Lee could play Wonder Woman and find a way to pull it off. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm sold. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting in this one, but sure, let's go with it. Let's just roll these dice. Let's just see what happens. But um, but yeah, definitely. If you've never checked out Return slash Way of the Dragon. It's one of those, like, I feel like it's a total must-watch in, like, the kung fu movie kind of realm. Like, one of those, like, I'm not going to say it's, like, maybe, like, the, you know, like, one of the best movies of all time, but it's such a legendary movie in itself. It's just more like, it's like the history movie of, like, kung fu stuff. And just seeing, like, Bruce Lee putting together his first, like, you know, directorial written movie, having Chuck Norris show up, which, you know, really at the end of the day, that Chuck Norris versus Bruce Lee fight is just something so special. You know, and then all the rest of the weird shenanigans. And then plus also, I just think as just far as if anybody's just into filmmaking, it's one of those movies like you watch this and you kind of go, OK, you know, beyond having Bruce Lee, the rest of it's kind of possible. Because, I mean, like, really, you got the restaurant scenes. I mean, there's there's a little bit of scenes like that when they're out, like in Rome. And then there's, you know, when they're in the Coliseum, find Chuck Norris. And then there's the very ending scene, too, I guess we kind of forgot about where um, they're literally just fighting it out like in some guy's driveway, it feels like. I'm not even too sure. It's like a pull-off somewhere on the we, side of the road. We made it. We, this is actually... We actually forgot to mention this because the ver- the story is very straightforward. We summed up the story. Pete, like, he comes here to stop these guys from fucking with this restaurant. It, he, they... He basically... every There's a few times he just barely misses them. Like, he just missed them all the way they were in there. He fights them off. They go back and forth. In that time, he kind of gets a, starts to bond with the uh, girl who owns it, uncle, who's apparently everybody's uncle, and all the friends. And then there's a few attempts on his life, but he always stops them. We forgot to mention this mm-hmm. at the very end, uncle, like you know, because they, they, you know, they end up bringing Robert Wall and the Japanese fighter there, to, uh, while you know, like you know, Bruce Lee fights them for a little bit, and like two guys who's training were like. Hey man, we got this. Go over and get down like the gay Mick Jagger guy, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he does that, and then while they beat these guys up, you know, they're a little. It's a little harder for them because they're not Bruce Lee level fits, but they manage to beat them. And Uncle's like, "Good job, good job." And they just fucking knife bolt these fucks. Like, Uncle, what are you doing? Like, 
I got a hard life, and if she sells the restaurant, I'll get a lot of money. Don't judge me. <laughs> he starts laughing, starts doing like an evil, like, mad He's like, I can laugh. go back to China now. What I've always wanted. A rich man. Fuck you, Romans. Then does like this, like, you know, blur out, dissolve, like, ah, ha, 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 ha. like, oh, Jesus, all right. Yeah, he said, don't judge him, but he's laughing like a fuck, like a fucking lunatic. And then after Bruce Lee defeats and kills Chuck Norris, just by, you know, that's a, that's a brutal fight, too. But when, once he does it, and they're ch chasing down the Asian Mick Jagger dude, he's like, boss, wait for me. The boss unloads on him. Bruce Lee stops him and kills, kills uncle in the process. The, that the bad guy the main bad guy does so yeah yeah so it gets kind of tense there towards the end you just got that sort of twist where it's like oh that, that fucking lovable uncle not so lovable is he he's a little stabby actually yeah he went to town on all those kids all those kids that he you know called nephew <laughs> called nephew and gave 20 bucks to for chinese new year yeah exactly you know probably bought them all the geese too <laughs> I mean, that's why, because they burned the geese. Like, we don't need these anymore. Like, those are my life savings I bought for those boys. <laughs> yeah. Well, you... They said they really, it was like a kid that said he wanted to learn how to skateboard, <laughs> tried it for three days, and then <laughs> next thing you know, it's in the closet. <laughs> you know, collecting dust. <laughs> oh, that's totally what happened with those guys. Right there with the trumpet and, and the painting acrylics. Yeah, and his Panasonic 3DO that I bought him. <laughs> Cost me seven hundred fucking dollars. Yeah, I know it's nineteen seventy two. I have time travel a bit. It's one of my hobbies. Fuck you. Yeah. And the guitar. Okay. Yeah. And the sitar. They're really listening to a lot of like Mister like Sergeant Peppers at the time. Yeah. Sergeant Peppers came out and boy, they just took their guitars, threw them in the fire. I don't know why they have to throw everything in the fire. You know, we we could resell this, you know. But no. Uh, Said it's not the honorable way, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, well, honorable way is, you know, paying for your own shit, not having me pay for it. Well, trying to keep this bitch afloat while you guys pretend to punch, what, pretend to punch imaginary people in the fucking back of the restaurant. Why try to keep this place afloat? So, you know, whatever. Yeah, you see, that's just me. Bruce Lee shows up here. He's only got one outfit. You know, what I mean, he switches between taking the top off and you know wearing his like workout suit and so on. But it's only one outfit this whole time. See, he understands the value of a good suit. If this was the case, I totally why under, understand why Uncle went all stab crazy at the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, you know why he did now. You ungrateful little fucks. Oh, but um, yeah, grab this movie. We'll put a link in there to some type of version that, or whatever you can find on there. Hopefully, hopefully one of these days is like that blue box special set or whatever. They'll finally put it on Blu-ray or something, and like you'll actually be cheaper for once. Because that was the thing too. That thing wasn't even Blu-ray. That was like DVD at like thirty-five dollars. I was like, Jesus Christ. You know, but, um, but no, I, I'd love to have that just cause there's just something to be said to be having to like, I, I'd love to be able to watch the Chinese version. I always have the dub one, you know, cause this is, this is one of these dubs, but the dub's not really even the greatest on this one. Like on the big boss, the dub's actually not too bad. I will say it's one of those ones where like the dub's pretty dialed in. I mean, you know, it's a dub, but at the end of the day, you feel like someone's trying, Well, this one just felt like it was like, like Hey guys, we got, we got to dub this Bruce Lee movie. What? There's money. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll show up. How long do you think it'll take? Ah, mm -hmm. we'll get done in a weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of how most of these usually feel. Yeah, exactly. They're the same three guys. They're going to dub it everything. But, um, but yeah. Once we're done with doing these dubs of Speed Racer, we'll be right on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Finish that up, too. Right from our, like, Rat Pack cover band. <laughs> Yeah, the guys is just like, we worked in all these movies in the 40s and 50s, and then we couldn't find work, so we just found it doing voiceovers for dubbing movies and, you know, cartoon shows and everything. <laughs> what's your, what's your company name? It's called We Dub Everything. There's three of us and a woman. 20 years strong now. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, yeah, check this film out. Fun times to be had. And then uh, I'll put a little link in the description for it and so on so you can go find it somewhere and enjoy it. But till then, you know, go to oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, movies, comics, all that fun stuff. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks.
Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again. We're out of here.